coming to our second philosophy of physics conference. As you'll see from the printed program, we're in for a bit of a treat today. Two of our speakers are academics with doctoral degrees in both physics and philosophy. One of our talks is being delivered by both a physicist and a philosopher in cooperation. I'll be interested to see how that works out. One of our speakers was involved in the discovery of the Higgs boson. And one of our talks is being given by a member of the endangered species Polymath. Sadly, we have lost one speaker. Dr. Nassim is unfortunately unable to join us this afternoon, but Dr. Energy will be covering both parts of the talk on the case of the Higgs boson. The theme of the conference this year is the meaning of matter and the trouble of time. From the dawn of civilization, people have asked questions about the nature of reality. The world presents itself to us as something not merely to be handled, but to be pondered. What exists, what is reality really like, and where do we fit into it all? Wilfred Sellers defined the aim of philosophy in terms of understanding how things in the broadest possible sense hang together in the broadest possible sense. However, as the humanities and the sciences have increasingly unraveled, perhaps especially from the 19th century onwards, two different images of the world separated out. The manifest image of the world containing such things as our thoughts, intentions, and how things appear to us, and the scientific image of the world containing such things as laws, fields, and forces. The question then arises, how can we reconcile these pictures of the world in some way? Should we even try? John Henry Newman, in his discussion of the idea of a university, wrote that, all that exists as contemplated by the human mind forms one large system or a complex fact which resolves itself into an indefinite number of particular facts. All as viewed by the mind are combined together and form a correlated character, one with another, an integral object. But without that concerted effort towards integration and the clearing of some common ground between the disciplines, the university is ever in danger of degenerating into a sort of bazaar or pantechnicon, in which wares of all kinds are heaped together for sale in stalls independent of each other to save the purchasers the trouble of running about from shop to shop. At St. Andrews, the Physics and Philosophy Society, also known as FISDIL, currently chaired by Paul Rimmer, has been concerned from its inception with the problem of getting three disciplines into conversation with each other again. It's often very tempting to imagine that one's own subject is the most important. After all, physics has been very successful in explaining and predicting many aspects of nature. In seeking how things hang together, in some sense, we might be tempted to say that if the scientific image of the world offered by physics produces a profound disconnect with the manifest image, so much the worse for common sense, for phenomenal experience, and for anything else that isn't physics. However, anyone familiar with the history and philosophy of science knows it's naive to claim that physics is conducted in some kind of metaphysical vacuum in which reality claims straightforwardly pop out of the pages of the theories we publish in our papers. Physics embodies many assumptions that are philosophic in nature, and its interpretation needs the kind of careful argumentation and rich conceptual resources that philosophers have developed for grappling with questions about reality. But if physics without philosophy is blind, philosophy without physics can be wayward. There have been rather embarrassing examples of philosophers who have put forward esoteric schemes for reality which have failed to square with the empirical facts, or are motivated by antiquated folk physics that needs updating. And sometimes philosophers, in our of reduction and the scientific image of fundamental physics, need to get a prophetic call back to a richer and perhaps less self-destructive view of reality. The history of science and theology is considerably more interesting and complex than many popular books suggest. However, through the 19th and much of the 20th century, modern theology seemed to retreat from the problems of science and philosophy. By the mid-1900s, logical positivists were disregarding theological statements as essentially meaningless. Whilst these strictures of the Vienna Circle are eventually discredited, and the number of theistic philosophers today is rising, the spirit of positivism lingers on in various forms of scientism and reductionism that have perhaps been overly restricting our reasoning about reality. 
The philosophical theologian is well placed to point out these presuppositions, critique them, and offer a different vision of reality. 